Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our Apprenticeships Virtual Open Event Talk for Crawley College, um, part of the Chichester College Group. Um, we hope you're all kind of sitting comfortably and enjoying our virtual open event. My name is Donna Harfield, and I am one of the Apprenticeships team here, um, placed to help our students and our local employers find their apprenticeship needs. Um, I'm joined on the panel by um, Tom Coombs, who's in our uh, apprenticeships team also. Tom specialises in uh, the engineering apprenticeships at our Crawley campus and is on hand to help with um, questions in the chat box. Um, alongside Vicky Ross, who's also in the apprenticeships team um, and who coordinates everything and who helps with the um, advertising of jobs um, and getting those jobs circulated to our employers. We also have on the panel this evening, Catherine Seal, who is our Apprenticeships Quality Manager across the group. Um, and she oversees the journey once you're on the apprenticeship programme itself and doing your study. Um, as we go, please do put any questions for us um, and the panellists into our chat box. So please do that as you go, because what we're going to do this evening is give you an overview of apprenticeships, how they work, um, to hopefully give you the information you need to know if they're right for you and if they're right for your next step in your learning journey. OK, um, so we will um, push on uh, uh, now. So uh, Nefri, if you can move us along to the next um, slide, please. So a little bit about the CCG. OK, so the Chichester College Group is formed of five colleges um, across West Sussex. We are the largest college group in Sussex itself. Um, and you can see on the map here the sites that we have um, uh, all of our sort of courses and our centres at. Um, with a whole range of courses available at those. Um, so if you're, if you're living in the local area, then what I would say is we, we certainly have a course to service your needs. It just depends what you need and what you want in terms of your next step in your learning journey. Um, you may have already seen this evening that we are rated outstanding by Ofsted. Now, that is no small accolade. It's something that we've, um, across the whole group, worked very hard to achieve. Um, and it's a real um, testament to the quality of education and learning that you get when you join uh, any one of these campuses. We are number one in Sussex and Hampshire as well for apprenticeships, which we are um, very proud of those achievement rates. And we are in the top 50 UK apprenticeship training providers as well. And that was a, a survey done this year. OK, so let's um, let's crack on with the um, the main kind of focus of this evening, which is the apprenticeship itself. Um, as I said, hopefully tonight you'll understand what it's about, what you have to do to be an apprentice, what's involved, um, and then outline kind of whether or not that's right for you in terms of the next step of your learning journey. OK, so the first thing, it is a real job. And that's really important. If you take away nothing else this evening, please take that away, because uh, we quite often get people saying, I want to do the apprenticeship, but I don't have a job where I can do my apprenticeship at. Uh, now, that's a major problem. Uh, you do have to have the job. Um, we're here to help. So don't worry. And there's lots of avenues you can go down. We're going to get onto that in a little bit. Um, but you cannot go onto an apprenticeship without having a job that um, an employer who will take you on as their apprentice. OK, so that's the first thing. As part of that real job, you will earn a competitive salary, which is great news. So if you're sat at home and you're sort of thinking I'm in my final year at school or perhaps I've done I've done my A-levels, what next? Um, it's really good to know that actually alongside that real job, you earn a salary. So an apprentice uh, minimum wage is £4.15 per hour. Um, that does change every year when the minimum wage goes up. Um, and that can sometimes be quite significant for um, somebody who's, uh, I'd say, probably an average weekly wage is around the 200 to 250 pound a week um, mark for an, for an apprentice. So actually, it's quite nice to suddenly go from school um, to into this real job where you're getting a salary. Now, with that salary, just bear in mind comes the responsibilities that go with being an employee at that organisation. So you have to be there on time. You have to um, uh, make sure that you you, do, you lose your summer holidays and your Christmas holidays and you're working uh, like mum and dad all year round. <laughs> OK, so that's something to really kind of have in the forefront of your mind if you're thinking an apprenticeship is the, my next step. You do gain a formal qualification. So you gain the formal qualif qualification that's equivalent to any other sort of programme that you might study at the group um, as well. So you will come out with the apprenticeship standard. And what that really means is it's the standardisation of that qualification for that industry. So whether you're becoming a fully qualified uh, bricklayer 
or a fully qualified hairdresser or a fully qualified um, uh, you know, uh, manager. Whatever it might be, you will get that qualification to that industry standard. You might, um, within that qualification, you also have what's called the knowledge, skills and behaviours that sit underneath that, um, that trade as such. So you will have all of that that sits underneath it. You might have uh, functional skills, which is maths and in English, if you don't already have that achieved. Um, and you, will, you may also have a diploma in there as well. So that's good to know. They last between one to four years in duration. I'd say probably a good um, average duration is anywhere between 18 months to two years. That's the most of them are around that sort of time scale. If you have an apprenticeship in mind that you're thinking, I would like to move on and be um, and to study human resources, for instance, as an apprentice, we can give you the specific details for each of those subject particulars. Um, so if you do have something in mind in particular, do pop it in the chat now. And we'll endeavour to answer that if you've got something in mind or how long will my programme be or arrange a one to one with us after this um, this talk, because we're here to help. There's never any cost to you as an apprentice. That's a really important takeaway from this evening. OK, so you don't um, ever pay towards your training. Um, so that that's the same whether you're uh, 16 or 60 years old. <laughs> OK, um, so you never put an apprentice will never pay towards their training. Now, your your employer might. So that's just something to bear in mind. And that will really depend on your age and the, the, the uh, size of the company that you're working for. And you can choose from a wide, a wide range of apprenticeships and levels um, across the group. So they start at level two, which is the equivalent to um, GCSEs. Um, a, a lot of people think, oh, I've just done my GCSEs. I don't want to redo the level two. But what I would say is you, you've done GCSEs in lots of different types of subjects. Now you're specialising. So actually, if it's the first time you've ever done that trade, you have to take it back to the grassroots as such and get the kind of the essentials in that that core uh, subject that you're choosing. So um, so they start at level two, but they go right the way up to level seven and, and beyond actually, so level eight. But um, at the college, we, we offer them up to sort of level six, our degree sort of apprenticeships. Um, and as I say, you know, they really are higher level programs at that stage. So level two um, is intermediary. You've got level three, which is an advanced study. And anything from level four upwards is higher level study. So we've looked at what an apprenticeship is. Now, who can become an apprentice? So we've got this broad kind of statement here, um, and that gives you kind of the overview. But what I'd like to do after that is unpick that a little bit and look at the common types of people that we have coming forward saying, I'd like to be an apprentice. I really want to make this work. Um, so generally speaking, it's for anybody over the age of 16, not in full time education and living in the UK. OK, so that's the first thing to say, OK, well, if I fit that bill, that's great. Um, now let's have a look at some of the common types. So quite often we have people coming straight from school or straight from college. Maybe they've done A levels or they've done a BTEC before um, and they want to move on to an apprenticeship to start to study in a specific discipline. Now, the most important thing I would say is knowing what you want to do, because with apprenticeships, you can't combine your options. OK, so you are choosing one subject. So if you're thinking I'm just about to leave school or college or one of those circumstances I just described, then really think about what it is you'd like to do next, because you do need to know that because you are specialising under apprenticeship study. So what next? Now, it's very viable as well. We won't linger on this too long, but um, adults um, and we, we see that quite often when an, uh, an adult learner wants to kind of uh, a more mature learner wants to have a career change. So um, we see people come back to apprenticeships because they recognise that they don't have experience and they don't have any qualifications in the new subject. So as a hypothetical, say somebody's worked in care for the last 20 years, but actually they want to now work in an office environment. But actually they take one of our apprenticeships as a business administrator because they realise they don't have the qualifications or experience to go straight into that job. And it's a way for them to retrain. And last but not least, we've got the already employed market. And this is a really viable route. So actually for mums and dads, if you're watching tonight and you're thinking, actually, this sounds really good. Um, could I be an apprentice? It's a great way to get um, continuous professional development under your belt as well. So you as long as you are doing the study programme, 
um, that you uh, in your job role you can move on to an apprenticeship and you can gain a qualification to accredit your experience as well so that's a really viable route and we quite often see that in the general kind of it tends to be with managers or as I said earlier you know human resources is another one so all of these um, types of people come forward to do apprenticeships and they're, they're all really plausible um, routes into doing the apprenticeship itself so this is what we offer across the group okay so um, we can go into the more uh, specific details if you have something in mind but you know just as a, a snapshot so under construction you might be doing electrical you might be doing uh, plumbing you might be doing uh, uh, brick bricklaying um, you know and equally as I said we've got under our uh, professional services you've got business administration you've got customer service you've got human resources so there's a whole range of different types of subjects that sit underneath these broad sectors of industry as well so you really can study anything under apprenticeships and in a bit um, we will hopefully get on to showing you where you can find and locate um, different types of apprenticeships too Okay, so we talked at the start about having the all important employer in bo on board before you can move on to your apprenticeship and that is absolutely critical. Um, what we wanted to do as part of this was to give you a, a flavour of some of the employers that we work with that do apprenticeships and this is across the group um, but we have um, very notable employers um, as you can see here who take on apprentices year after year. Um, and they can be in a range of subjects. Um, to give you an example, so Western Sussex Hospitals, which is Worthing Hospital and, and St Richard's in Chichester, uh, they don't just take on um, healthcare assistants, they take on business administrators and they also take on accountants as well. So don't always just think, oh, they're a hospital, they'll only want people in care. It's actually much broader than that. Um, we actually have 30 job roles actually um, going live with them at the moment. Um, but it is competitive because of that. It's very competitive because if you think, if you take Rolls Royce, for instance, so they take on apprentices in uh, near to Chichester, um, for any any job role, they will um, usually have about 20, uh, approximately about 20 apprentices per year that they take on. For those 20 job roles, there's probably about 120 applicants. Okay, so it can be very competitive and in a bit in a minute I'm going to show you our progression plus team who are superb at helping um, with CV writing with getting you ready for interview because that is always daunting. So don't worry. Um, that's scary if it's the first time that you've gone to job interview or if it's the 50th time that never changes. But we are here to help and get you ready because the most important thing with an apprenticeship is that you are ready to take on a real job. OK, and I just before we move on, I'm just going to caveat that, actually, because um, the really important thing, I don't want you to be too scared by that either, because actually um, employers take on apprentices knowing that they're not the finished article. Employers take on apprentices knowing that actually they've got a lot to learn in that job role. And that's the point of the apprenticeship. There's lots of perks for the employers. Um, but one of the things that they know when they step forward and they say, yeah, I'm going to take on an apprentice. It's because they want that junior role, somebody who's going to um, learn the ropes, learn the way the organization works. And uh, nine times out of 10, the employer keeps the apprentice because they want to invest in them. They want to develop them. They want to give them the skills to learn the trade um, and to help their business grow. So there's a lot in it for the employer but they don't expect you to know everything and that's the whole point of the apprenticeship It's that bridge between the world of work and the world of study okay and as an apprentice you are both an employee at that company with all the responsibilities that go with that and also a full-time student which is obviously why as well you can't combine your options with apprenticeships so you can't be doing an apprenticeship and one a level for instance you know with apprenticeships it's a very specific choice and it's one route so that's why I said be really clear on what you want to do and why as well. OK, so how do you get into that employment? So if you're listening to all of this and thinking it sounds really good, this sounds exactly what I want. I'm ready to go into the world of work. I really want to be a hairdresser or, or whatever it might be. Um, how do I make that happen now? Because I don't have that all important job. So let's have a little look at some of those options. So you can search vacancies online. And I'm just going to ask uh, Navpreet, who's doing the PowerPoint for me, um, to uh, move across to our Find an Apprenticeship page. OK, and I'm going to give you um, a real example. So this is Find an Apprenticeship. And I know that Vicky's putting that uh, link into our 
um, chat as well. So you'll have the, the sort of the URL so you can go and find this after. It's find an apprenticeship. It's on the gov.uk web uh, page. And if we just go down, I'm just going to give you an example. So if we put motor vehicle, so if you were thinking, OK, I want to uh, work in a garage and I want to become, um, uh, I want to, to work there. And if we put location as the postcode RH13, 9RT. Now, this should, in theory, um, bring up uh, one of our job roles uh, near to the Crawley campus. OK, and if we just have a little search down and then at the top there, we'll have a look at that one. So Tambury Limited. So this is our job. So this is a job that um, the employer is Tambury Limited and your training provider would be Crawley College. OK, you can see the closing date is the 19th of October. So if you're still thinking about for this year, you know, and you want to do this, then you can go in and, and you can sign in and register and apply now. You can see the weekly wage there is between £168 to £322. So I'd imagine once you're successful in the job, you'd start on the 168 a week and you'd work up as, as you successfully move through and stay employed. And obviously you're doing your job well, that would all that would all move up. And you can see the overview of the job here. And if we just scroll down, you can see some of what's involved. You can see where that is. And you can search it. So this is a real example of what's out there and what you should expect. And just down the bottom, you'll see also you'll see a little bit more about the employer, but also about the training element as well. Um, it shows you on a map where it's based. So you can see if that's realistic for you to get to and back um, as well. And as well, you can see the Chichester College Group is the training centre led by the Crawley campus. Um, and then you can see what else is involved. And I think Tom's uh, details are there, who's on the panel tonight. So this is just one example. Um, thanks very much for that, Navpreet. Uh, if we go back to the main presentation now. So that's how you search vacancies online. As you can see, it's a really um, uh, simple system to use. It's really uh, user friendly and you can um, find what you need on there. You can approach potential employers directly. OK, so uh, so go to, uh, you know, if you're based in um, local, if you're if you're in, in Hayward Heath, for instance, then it's probably not worth you searching employers that are down in Portsmouth, for instance, um, you've got to be able to do that commute every day. So think about the realistic um, elements of it. But look at those employers near to you who you might want to work for and reach out to them. I think employers find that really encouraging when they see that sort of proactive behaviour. Um, and if you are doing any work experience, talk to them, say, you, have you ever taken apprentices on here? Would you consider it? And if they say, well, I might, but I'm not sure what's involved, then definitely get us involved as a college. Um, Tom, uh, myself and the team we work among, part of our role is to go out and have those discussions with employers so they understand uh, the equivalent of what you're learning tonight and what their responsibilities are as an employer taking you on. And we're happy to have those discussions to make this um, op opportunity convert for you. What next? Volunteering. OK, so volunteering is a really great way to get into an apprenticeship job role um, because also it makes sure that you have checked that trade for yourself. Um, so you can go, actually, do I like doing this? Um, and, and I do I definitely want to do it as an apprenticeship? Because as we said, but you can't combine options. Once you've chosen as an apprentice, you are specialising, at least for the foreseeable future. And ask family and friends, OK? This is a really great way sometimes. You don't know who's in your, your, um, your immediate network of people um, to actually say, you know, could you help me? Um, I know dad's company owns an electrical firm and I want to be an electrician. Um, so start there. And last month, like, as I said, ask your current employer. So that's, you know, our top tips for kind of making it happen. But as I said, you know, part of what we do as a team is generate opportunities as well, as evidenced by the one that I've shown you, where we do have this great opportunity available. So, you know, if you are thinking, actually, I'm ready to take this step then start to think about that. If you're thinking for next September, if you're sort of finishing school now, um, then, you know, you've got to start thinking realistically in terms of recruitment timescales for when the employers would be ready. So if you're thinking for next September, which I think probably the majority of those watching tonight maybe are, um, then you're probably sort of thinking into the new year, but definitely start those conversations now so that, you know, at least you can volunteer, you can get that experience, you can see really if you like it or not, because, you know, thinking I want to do that is very different to actually doing it. Um, and, and reach out and make those links now. 
things to consider. So I just want to recap on some of the stuff we've gone through tonight. Now, maths and English is required under apprenticeship study. Now, this is quite often the kind of Achilles heel for some, um, sadly, but it's um, it's one of those things that it, it is embedded into the programme. Now, if you don't have it achieved before you um, before you go on to your apprenticeship, it will be embedded into your program. And some of our um, apprenticeships, it's mandatory before you enter the program. So you'll have to do what we call either a, a step up program or you will have to do a different program to get that under your belt before you can move on to the on to the apprenticeship. And I imagine probably the Q&A box is going um, a little bit crazy at this time because it's usually um, one of those key questions. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the maths, but I might get the English um, or I haven't got that achieved. What what next? With all of your personal circumstances, we, we are here to help so we can we can advise one to one. And what I would recommend is reach out to us at the college. We're going to show you how to get in touch with us uh, before we finish tonight. And um, and then we can arrange a one-to-one, -one. whether that's a chat, a Teams call, whatever it might be, we can we can arrange a time to speak with you um, so that we can help you with your own particular circumstances. Now, you can't have a higher level qualification in the same or similar subject. So just to kind of put that in context, if you've done level three engineering as a full time student already, you can't move on to the level three engineering as an apprentice. OK, um, apprenticeships shouldn't be seen as a route to industry when you're already qualified. Apprenticeships are the way to get qualified and also at the same time get that route into your dream job. OK, so you can't get get qualified and then go on to it um, because you'll be what we call your you've already got the qualification element. So you actually, at that stage, you need to just go and get a job. Um, and that can sometimes apply. But you can, however, move up through the levels. So from a level two engineering to the level three, for instance. Um, and you must have a contract of employment. That's really critical. So if you take well, nothing else away, please take that, bear that in mind. And it's quite often mums and dads that we, we deal with in the main who go, what are you saying, my, my son or daughter can't do the programme? We go, well, and sadly, they haven't got um, a job to do their apprenticeship in, in a relevant subject. You know, so if you're doing hairdressing, you need to be working in a salon. If you're working as a chef, you need to be working in a kitchen. Um, so you must have that contract of employment in place as well. OK. And like I said, you must be sure, therefore, of your chosen subject. It's no good going, I think I might want to be a plumber, but I might also want to be a carpenter. And I think maybe um, in the long run, I might want to go into HR, um, human resources. It, 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 you know, you've got to be sure, actually, um, I know I want to do that subject because I've researched it, I've thought about it, I've tried and tested it maybe, um, and that's what I want to do. Um, apprenticeships, I always say, comes at the end of a career journey. It's not the sort of, uh, quite often they have a, a bad reputation for people who um, struggle academically. And yes, they are vocational study programs. So everything you're doing in your job role should be relevant to what your study program is. And it's not that the apprenticeship sits over one side and your job the other. They're designed to be embedded in the way that everything you learn um, is relevant to your job role and everything you do in your job role can be used as evidence to gain your qualification. So they're designed to go hand in hand. And like I said, it's often not us, but the employer who ultimately chose it, chooses the successful applicant. What you'll find with apprenticeships is that you'll have essentially two interviews. Now that might not be formal with the employer, so you might not have a, an an interview with the employer because maybe you've done loads of work experience there and if they're happy to take you on you might not have to have that scary interview but you will have a quick interview with the course leader at the college um, okay and that what, what that will do is just make sure that you've got the entry requirements to move on to the program okay so we will have that with the college but it's not something to feel daunted by and um, obviously in the in the stages building up to that work with uh, myself Tom Vicky and the team at Crawley to, to sort of uh, understand what it is you need to move on to that program in advance and like I said employability is key you are entering the world of work so you've got to be ready to take that step and if you're thinking oh that all sounds a little bit scary for me it might not be the best option for you yet and what I'd recommend in those scenarios is to go on to one of the full-time programs instead OK, um, so in that scenario, I'd probably say, you know, maybe look at a different option whereby obviously you're on a, a, 
um, you, know, you haven't got the employability element as a, as a thing to consider because there's a lot to juggle with apprenticeship study. You're doing a full time job, you're doing full st time study program. Sometimes you're doing maths and English as well. Um, and you might even have a diploma in there. So it's a lot to do as well as obviously um, having your own personal life. So I mentioned earlier around support services that we offer at the group. Um, Progression Plus is there and they're ready with CV writing, interview preparation um, and help with how to make that all important job role happen if you're thinking this is right for me. Uh, register with the National Apprenticeship Service, which is the one that we showed you earlier, which is where we did that example job role. So register there and start searching, see what's out there, see what sorts of job roles there are and start to understand what sort of salary you could expect and what sort of location that might be in. Um, and last but not least, stay in touch with us as well. We are here to help you um, and we have dedicated um, uh, account executives who work with each industry um, locally. Um, so they have lots of um, lots of sort of uh, foots in the doors with lots of local companies uh, where those companies are saying to uh, the team, can you find us an apprentice, please? So quite often you might um, not have to apply via the, the formal routes we've shown because actually if you're on our radar, we can put your CV forward for consideration. So definitely um, reach out to us because that's one of the first steps too. So let's just recap on, on why choose an apprenticeship. So some of the main things you earn while you learn, which is really lovely with that with that salary. However, you do get um, the uh, responsibilities that go alongside it. So just, you know, that 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 comes with all of those responsibilities too. Uh, you gain relevant work experience. OK, so that's superb. Um, all of that. It means that you're advancing your career journey um, and you will um, finish and get the equi equivalent qualification. But you'll have all of that experience on your CV, too, which is quite um, puts you in a bit of a more competitive uh, position when you're thinking about future jobs. You avoid student loans and debts, so you will not have um, student debt under apprenticeships. So that's a really, really good positive. And you accelerate your career opportunities. Like I've said, we quite often get people who finished a degree and then try and come and do an apprenticeship. Sometimes they're overqualified in the sense that they've already got the qualification element, um, but sometimes they are um, eligible as well. Um, so. Uh, you know, it really depends what you're looking to do, but it, it just shows you that actually getting a degree doesn't always result in that career opportunity, whereas apprenticeships, it's already tied into a career opportunity. So you're doing that part and parcel. And you can still go on to university should you decide after the apprenticeship that you still want to do that. Um, just to clarify, however, an apprenticeship doesn't have UCAS points attached. We quite often get asked that question, so I thought I'd just clarify that there. So it doesn't have any UCAS points attached to it. And last but not least, you are a step closer to your dream job. Um, the whole point of any training program is to get you that qualification, to get you nearer to your, your career job, uh, goals and your dream job. So, you know, we like to work back with our students. Where do you want to be and how do we help you get there? Now, if you're thinking actually apprenticeships, um, I know that actually the, 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 the occupation I want to do, it can be done via an apprenticeship, then, you know, really do consider that because actually you'll, you'll be fast tracking the route into getting that dream job. And I'd actually even argue that actually it is the dream job itself. So you've already started doing it. OK, so um, any questions? I'm going to open it up to um, Tom and Catherine now. So um, Tom and Catherine, have we had any questions as we go that we, we kind of see recurring? And I'm just going to ask that we keep them quite high level at this stage. So if you've got any specific questions that relate to you and or your, your children's particular circumstances, then we will answer them one to one with you. But we'll keep these questions, if that's OK, quite top level so that they help everybody who's watching this evening. I think um, the main thing, Donna, is people are asking about um, time scales. So if um, some students are going to get their GCSE results next summer, what sort of time scales are we looking at? Yeah, it, it really does depend on what you're doing. Now, what I would say is it's never too early to start looking. So that's the first thing. So definitely start volunteering now, you know, because also that will just check for you be doing that so say you want to be a hairdresser and, and you know you want to start next September go and um, get a Saturday job in a, in a salon because actually you'll see what it's really like and it might be that you do that for a few weeks and you get to Christmas and say I really don't like that which you've still got time then to um, review that option and, and review your choices um, but it can be very kind of um, 
to the wire really you know it's it, it, we we work with our students but the most important thing i'd say is you know keep looking keep trying to create those opportunities yourself work with us because you never know what we've generated as well that might be ideal for you but it can literally happen if say we had somebody who was looking to start now and they wanted to be um, a mechanic then the job that we showed earlier Catherine they could go and apply for that tonight and they could be looking to start that in two weeks you know with by the time that you've had the interview at the garage and then the interview at the college you know so actually it can happen really quickly so they sorry everyone but there isn't an exact science to that um but if you're thinking way ahead of yourself that's always better but it can happen very quickly and, and kind of overnight it's the same for any other job role as well though you know same for mums and dads out there who are thinking so apprenticeships is just like any other job in that sense it's when the opportunity comes along with the employer i think as well um for those apprenticeships that are really sought after like rolls royce um, there is quite a long uh, process as well that they, um, mm. it's, you know, you, you're, you're going after a really sought after job. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind as well. Um, I think um, some of the other ones... Just that... Sorry, Catherine, just before we move on with, from that, I just also want to outline, because this is, um, um, I, I think the whole team, we love what we do because we get to create opportunities for people. So in any, you know, any one year, we're making sort of a thousand job opportunities, uh, which is an amazing part of what we do. And it's highly rewarding. But sadly, what we can't do is guarantee getting you an apprenticeship. So I just want to make that really clear. So we will do our utmost to make that happen. But it's a bit of a two way street there. Um, and sad, this is why I'm saying, you know, make sure you have a plan B with an apprenticeship, because if you don't get that an all important job role, we cannot put you on the course. And I think um, thinking about um, what your CV looks like and what extra um, curricular activities you've done and what work experience you've done makes you the better candidate for that job, because there could be quite a few people going for that job as well. Absolutely. Um, I think probably one of the other things um, are people asking about are there any qualifications within the apprenticeships? Um, so it really depends on what that apprenticeship is um, and which, which industry and what level um, it's within as well. Um, have you got any advice on that, Donna? Um, not really, apart from what you've outlined, Catherine, and it is so subject specific. Um, for instance, down at Chichester, we do data analyst. I know that's got like a vendor qualification attached to it. So it, it depends what you're looking at. And I'll probably say in those scenarios, it's probably best if we advise you one to one on that, because then you'll understand exactly what you get. Now, actually, Navpreet, if you just navigate to the Institute for Apprenticeships for me, please. Now, this is the other side that we just haven't had a chance to look at. But I'd recommend anybody who's thinking, um, let's have a look at um, you know, if we go to, um, so this is the Institute for Apprenticeships and T-Levels, and you can search any apprenticeship on here. So you go to the Apprenticeship Standard tab, and then if you just put in the keyword there, if you put in, um, uh, let's go for ambulance, because we do that at, at Crawley. Is it, uh, I'm just thinking, uh, there we go, Associate Ambulance Practitioner. So you can, so we operate this at our Crawley campus. And um, on this, you can start to look at, and this is the same for all apprenticeships, so whether it's a hairdresser, electrician, whatever you want to do, you can you can look at this. So this is a real job role and, and a real apprenticeship opportunity. We have a number of um, uh, paramedics studying at the Crawley campus um, via apprenticeships. So you can start to look down this and see actually what's involved. So then you can start to, if we just keep on scrolling, you'll see the knowledge, skills and behaviours that are included. And you'll see what you'll study as part of that program. The first page is designed to give you a bit of an overview. So no matter what you're thinking, OK, I'd like, I'd like to know the detail of what's involved. Look on this site and you can you can have a good look. <laughs> um, so you can see there we go. So there's the qualification element. By the end of program, uh, become an uh, associate ambulance practitioner. Apprentices must have achieved the following. And it bullet points all the elements that you will get as part of that um, as part of that apprenticeship. And if you wanted to see the assessment plan, that's also on here. If we just scroll to the top, you'll see that actually you can um, see the assessment plan and that will give you a very long document, which will really go into the kind of nitty gritty of what's involved. 
I think um, at this point as well, you, you saw there, there was some qualifications. Um, so we've, we've had quite a few um, apprentices that do go on to university, don't we? Because the qualifications themselves have UCAS points. So uh, the apprenticeship doesn't have UCAS points, but any qualifications that are embedded in it do have UCAS points, just to point that out. Yeah, and, it, and, and quite often the progression route now, you go on to a degree level apprenticeship. So we, um, we operate down in um, uh, Queen Alexandra, for instance, and Western Sussex hospitals. They do the healthcare assistant one at level two or level three, and they progress up to the nursing um, degree, you know, at level six. So there's, you know, there's all those progression routes that you can access via apprenticeships. Um, because it isn't always um, for all um, trades that you might want to do as your job. Um, it might not be that you have to go to university and get a degree in order to access that. You know, sometimes it really can be done via apprenticeship study. So have a look on that site. And I'm sure we've got the URL in the chat already. Um, if not, then Vicky will pop it in there now um, to make sure that you, you know, you, you've looked and what, seen what's involved and seen if it's possible via apprenticeships. Catherine, any more questions? Um, so um, it's just um, mainly sort of uh, questions that you've answered really. So can I do an apprenticeship if I have a degree? Um, so obviously that's if, um, if it's in a different field, then that's fine, but not in the, not in the same um, industry sector or, or field. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of questions on functional skills, but again, we can help with that. And quite a few questions on um, can we help with CV writing, um, study skills, interview skills? Absolutely, yeah. So we're here to help. We, you know, we want to make this happen for um, all of our potential um, students at the college. So, you know, just reach out to us. Um, you can see how to get in touch with us um, on the screen there. Um, and what we'll do is we'll we'll get the support you need, no matter what the requirement. So whether that's CV writing, and that will be our progression plus team. So we'll refer you to the appropriate team, or help you if you just need a bit more advice um, that's um, uh, specific to you, if it's regards to apprenticeship. Um, Tom, th thanks, Catherine. Tom, did we have any further questions? I think we've got maybe a couple of minutes. Um, so are there any other uh, general questions that we've got? Yeah, sure. One general question um, that didn't come up, but I think will be good for people to know is uh, what are the main differences between apprenticeships and T-levels? Because I'm sure many people in the chat would have heard of our new T-levels as well. If you wouldn't mind explaining that, I think that'd be handy. Thank you, Tom. Thanks. I think we had um, had a, a, some barking there. In there. <laughs> um, so uh, we um, T-levels and apprenticeships. OK, so what's the um, what's the difference there? We um, now as uh, apprenticeships is a little bit more it's been around a little bit longer than t levels but t levels are a great way to study if you are maybe not ready to take that step into um into quite the world of work yet it's a bit more of a robust kind of study program at the college so the best way i'd probably say is is it's kind of a flip apprenticeship so with an apprenticeship you should expect to be in college on a ratio of four days in the workplace and one day at college Whereas an apprenticeship, you'll be four days in the college and one day in the workplace. So that's the best way around to look at it. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that addresses what it is. Um, and obviously with an apprenticeship, you do have that employer, you're, you're employed in that company. Whereas with um, the um, T level, it's more kind of a work experience placement. But I do think sometimes you get paid for that day. But I think that's really dependent on the placement. Uh, whereas apprenticeships, it is a full time job. So, yeah, with the um, apprenticeship study, I just want to clarify that as well, because a lot of people know that with apprenticeships, you do one day a week at college. Now, that isn't always the case. Um, it's the, probably the most common type of delivery. So you should be expect one of your days in the week, you'll come to college and you'll study. But the other days you'll be in the workplace. Um, but it doesn't always um, happen that way around. You can do what's called block release. So you'll come to college for a whole week. And then you'll be like six weeks working in your company. Um, and the other the other alternative is um, completely work based delivery. So you hardly ever come to college. You're constantly in the workplace and the uh, college uh, tuition team will come to you. OK, so that's the other option as well, just to clarify while we're on that point. And I think maybe we have time for one final question. Hopefully everyone's had their questions answered in the chat as well as we go. 
I think um, somebody's just put um, a last question on. Uh, they found an employer. What do they do next? Superb. OK, so we quite often get that in these. Um, speak to us. OK, so reach out once we understand um, what you're what you're doing uh, we can get you supported to get that next those next steps happening so that's great you've done the hardest bit there uh, quite often we're, we're working with individuals for quite some months to find that all important workplace so well done you um, we're here to help so reach out to us next and we can go and have the discussions with your employer next as well um, I think we'll uh, finish up there. Hopefully, like I said, you've had everything kind of covered. If you haven't, then reach out. Honestly, do. We, 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 we do want to make this happen for you. Um, and uh, I, I think across the whole group, our mission statement is to change lives through learning. Um, and apprenticeships certainly does that. What apprenticeships does is it gives you the step to your next career um, and it enables kind of the opportunities and the dream jobs that you want to aspire to. Thanks very much and enjoy the rest of the virtual opening.